All right, so on this episode of Old Mossy, we're going to work on a couple little fiddly bits while I uh, wait on title and maybe get into something bigger. We may just do the motor mounts. I don't know yet, um, but we'll see. We may do motor mounts. We may do glow plugs. I already got the parts. It's just a matter of whether or not I care enough to try. But we're going to go about getting title for this thing, finally. I've been working on it for just a little over a year now. Uh, the car, not the title. Uh, well, I guess both, technically. But today, we're just going to mess with fuses, because I have been having an issue with these cheapo uh, Bakelite fuses I bought, quite literally melting and then losing contact. So I bought some ceramic fuses, and uh, we're going to replace uh, all the blown 16-amp um, fuses in there, uh, with these ceramics so they don't melt and we're also going to replace a couple of other fuses that got melty um, just so they don't and anytime I get another one blow we'll replace it with this and the upside of using these ceramics is I can just replace the fuse element I can take these Bakelite fuses take the the metal you know fusible link part and just peel that off and put it onto these ceramic fuses and keep reusing them and then we won't have to worry about the, you know, melting issue. Alright, well, I actually still had some Bakelite, uh, some, sorry, some ceramic fuses uh, that originally were on the car, but these are aluminums. So I'm going to burn those up first because I have a feeling I'm going to pop a lot. And I still had another um, two Bakelite fuses, so I stashed another one in here and put one in there. We're going to burn those up first, and I'm going to save the nice copper ceramic ones for later, but... Uh, I'm not replacing the one for the sunroof because I have a caulk shut. There ain't no way it's opening. Don't really want it to open because I have a feeling I won't be able to close it. So we're going to ignore that one. This white fuse down here is melted, but I don't have any ceramic ones for that. Um, well, I do, but we're just going to not worry about it for now because it's still working. It's just kind of melted. Don't really know how the hell it got so much amperage in it to melt the Bakelite, but uh, not pop the fuse, but whatever. It still works, so... Good enough to me, so I'm going to call that good enough for now. Alright, so a brief little update from last video. If you look over in there, both of our return lines are dry, so that stopped leaking. So we at least, you know, were able to do something. So I was just in here poking around trying to clean up that. I think it's probably good, maybe. And I noticed down here in our brand new filter that uh, she's, uh, she's right full of shit already. So I think that's uh, pretty pretty good evidence that we are in fact fuel limited. And uh, that's why we have no low end power. And uh, it, why it doesn't seem to want to go above like 2500 RPM uh, when under load. All right, today we're just working on some minor things. Um, I was able to get this plug up here working well, no matter how much I shake it, it still stays on. So now that I'm on camera, it'll, but yeah, I can, I have to pull the plug entirely off to get the thing to shut off now. So, I would say that that just had some corrosion on it, so that's fixed. Back in here, I was told that the driver's side running light was out, and it appears that is indeed the case. It's very dim, but that's the running light right there. There's the brake light, and you know, I've got the patented brake brick in place. And I filed on the key a little bit because the guy at Lowe's who cut the key for me didn't do a stellar job. And for whatever reason, I can't use that second key on the trunk. It'll work on the glove box with difficulty and it works in the ignition pretty fine. So I filed on it some, still can't get it to fit in the trunk. So I'll have to pull the other one out of here and tape the two together and see if I can file on it. But I'm going to get in here and see if I can figure out how the hell to take these lights out and uh, see about replacing this one. And I think I'm going to try get up under the dash and replace that mouse chewed wire. You see all these cinder block scrapes in there? I just do not care. But I'm going to get in there and uh, see if I can... I think I'm just going to... Eh, I'll try and splice it if I can. I'll just wrap it in electrical tape. Put a wire nut on it or something. Just that random brown wire in there that was like three quarters of the way chewed through. All right, so I'm under the car, got her up on ramps, and uh, every single ball joint boot in this entire vehicle is just gone. Like, there is no saving any of these. 
The only one I can't tell you for 100% certain is gone is the upper ball joint over here. That one might still be good. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't even looked at it. That's the evaporator for the AC. It's toast. Looks like we do have a transmission leak. It looks like it is like the front seal on the transmission or something because it's not the torque converter because there's the bolt and that looks fine. But it is very slowly dripping transmission fluid so we'll just ignore it and top it off every once in a while. Um, that ground looks kind of crusty. We'll ignore it. Um, probably pretty close to uh, having a hole blow through the uh, exhaust right here below the turbo. Um, that'll be expensive to replace. Uh, but anyway, anywho, that is our 8mm Allen to get the engine mount off on this side. And I believe the other one is over here. So I'll get a pick and clean those out and see if they break free. And hopefully, I pray, they'll just come right out. And then we, maybe we'll just do these today. Alright, well that was actually really easy to take out. It's just those two knobs and, you know popped right out so it's just a, a bar stuck into a housing so that's actually a really nice design uh, went to change the running light and uh, that's probably the root of the problem so we'll see if we have a replacement for that probably don't but man can dream um, all the other filaments look fine um, I'll pop that one off just because of how easy it is and just check them uh, make sure they're fine as well I know all the fronts work um, actually you know I don't know if we have a high beam on one of these so I think I'll try that while I'm over here and then we'll just turn that on all right so I had all these spare bulbs but it looks like they're all running in um, turn signal lights I did get the brights to work I was just doing it wrong uh, well it was being funny it, it had a light on it the last time I drove it at night so I don't know what that's about but I don't think that one has a high beam, so we're going to pull that apart and uh, check on the filament, you know, just to be safe. Oh, did it one-handed. First time. It's a heavy-ass hood when you only got one hinge. So I'm going to hope that this is just some knobs and it comes out, and uh, we'll check that filament and hope for the best. All right, well, it's starting to rain big old fat fucking raindrops, and this is needlessly German. So in order to take this out, you gotta take these two guys off, which only have about three miles of thread on them. Fine thread, of course. And then you have to take those two guys out, which are holding this front cover on. And of course, the last person who did this put this top one in backwards. So I've gotta reach all the way in there just to get on the knurling. And of course it's also rusty. So I'm only able to go at like a 30th of a turn at a time. All while these big fat fucking raindrops are smacking me in the head and they're ice cold. And it's like 90 something out. So anyway, I'm gonna see if I can do that just to see if this bulb is burned out so I can buy one because I don't have a replacement. Fun. All right, well I switched gears to see if the rain would quiet down and I was able to get both of these out well, not out, but I got the got them to break free without too much force. They're in there with about 60 foot-pounds, but they just took one good solid hua and they just started backing out. So at least those won't be a problem, hopefully, maybe. Well, it's raining like a real motherfucker now. I did get that off, but we're kind of loosey-goosey dangling. There's a spring on the back side, so I can't pull it out and come look at it. Uh, I'm gonna go run inside and find an umbrella to see if I can get that off far enough that I could pull the bulb out and look at it. Then I'm gonna throw everything back together after I confirm or deny that it's the filament. And I think we're gonna go run around in the rain and just generally get into trouble a little bit just so I can, you know, get her up to temp and boil off all this water I got on the engine bay. Uh, just so nothing shorts out. And, uh, yeah. Fun, there goes my Saturday. All right, well, I was not anticipating it, but these look to be like sealed halogen units. Like, you know, like the kind of bulbs that you install on a porch light. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know how expensive those are gonna be or if I'm gonna need to buy a whole new housing with an adapter for just like semi-standard, you know, bulbs for that. Uh, I don't know, 
Uh, also, I just back, I just pulled the car into the garage. I you know had a brain blast and was like, why don't I do that instead of holding an umbrella like a retard? Also, I was able to get down in here and loosen that Allen bolt down there. And uh, car's still rolling back. Come on, how about you hit that pole? There we go. So that those theoretically aren't going to fight either. That didn't take a lot of force. They're going to be absolute motherfucker to get out though, because that's the only one I can access from above. I might be able to do this one if I take the air cleaner out. I might be able to get one of them, but the other two are going to have to be done like with a actual Allen key from underneath. So that'll be fun. Um, especially with, you know, a jack right there in the center that if I kick it, the engine will fall down and break my arm or something. But anyway, that's for another day because I ain't doing that in the rain. Um, was able to finally get that out and yeah, uh, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to inspect it. I guess I just need to plan on buying new headlights. Um, I guess now that I'm in here, I can go turn the key over and confirm, you know, actually whether or not I have brights. I can point this up so it'll reflect off of that there chrome something I'll figure it out all right well I'm in here and I got the headlights on if you look right over there we do have brights they're not particularly bright out of that one for some reason I think it's just because I can't actually see the, the full light going on off the reflection of yonder Corvette. But it does appear that we have brights on that side. So I did all that for nothing. But I guess now I know how to change a headlight and that I can't actually change one because I never find a replacement at an auto parts store. But whatever. Good enough. All right. Well, that's all back together. And I've got one other thing I want to mess with today. And that's the, this guy, this hood latch right here, this whole fucking system, way too goddamn tight when it actually latches. So what I want to do is take these two 10 millimeters out, I think they're 10 mils, and then stick like a 1 16th inch thick washer just as a shim underneath each of them between this bracket and the frame just to bring this down just ever so slightly so that this latches a little bit higher up. Might give me a little bit of jiggle in the hood but uh, it's, it's at the point where I never latch the hood. Um, I just engage, you know, this safety hook right here. Um, because if I go any further, I have to just about, you know, pull the car backwards on, the, on my makeshift hood release to get the thing to unlatch. So I wanna, you know, push this down a little bit to push that down a little bit so that the hood sits uh, just a, you know, a width higher so that you know I'm not fighting all this and I have a strong feeling that taking these four fuck huge Phillips head out it's gonna be a lot harder than just taking those two 10 mils out so I'm gonna try that all right so I think I finally got this thing adjusted properly it takes that much force rather than you know half of my ass and to come over here and pop the hood on my janky thing it only takes that much force and when I come over yonder, it's just a simple matter of pulling this guy out, pulling that up, and you know the deal. I can't really do this one-handed, but now I kind of sort of can. If I can not swallow a love bug. And get the finger, there we go. Get it high enough. Now we can do that all. The only issue is that it scrapes the paint right up here, but I mean, Let's be fucking real. The paint's toast. So, you know, if I got some paint that's self-clearancing, I don't really care. But the hood now latches, so we're going to call it good. What I actually had to do was, well, one, I went in there and I put two, you know, probably three thirty seconds washers underneath each one of those bolts and then pulled that whole mounting mechanism as far forward to the right as possible and then I came over here and I pushed or I loosened up these two hood mounts or hood bolts and then pulled this side of the hood as far forward as I could torque that down and came over here and then just you know dropped it down onto uh, the hood cowl up here and then torque that down with this pretty much as low as it'll go and the whole reason I'm doing that is because as you notice my gaps are not even and uh, that's because I have a broken off, you know, spring arm latch doohickey guy over here. 
Uh, so in order to make up for that, uh, I've had to, you know, basically take the hood and make it go ert, and then adjust this latch so that it, you know, turns out and in like this so that that guy will actually go in. Because before what was actually happening is that this thing right here was like that and the hole was actually coming down and just like hitting the side of it and I was forcing it into the hole. So the whole hood was acting as a giant spring pushing up against the latch. So I'd have to come up here and push on the hood and then pull that to get it to clear because it just didn't have the oomph. But now that's done. And you, that may not seem like a big thing, but that was a big bugaboo for me because if I'm going to drive this anywhere, it's going to break down. And the last thing I want to do, want to have is to be stuck on the side of the road with no way to get the hood open. Uh, and the only, you know, hood latch I have requires, you know, someone sitting on the hood and me, you know, pulling as hard as I can on a makeshift thing that might break off or tear the whole fucking cable out of there. So having this actually, you know, just that you can walk over here and, you know, with a reasonable amount of force, it's still pretty hard. Pop the hood. But, you know, I mean, before it took two hands and, like, I was, you know, trying to, you know, pull the car behind me. And it used to take two hands to shut it, so... I'm gonna call that good, and I think I'm going to fire up, run around, you know, check out my wipers, see if they work. I ordered some new wipers, they'll get here eventually, some nice premium beam wipers. Uh, always get your wipers off of Rock Auto. You know, you can get the highest quality wiper for like seven bucks, and then they just ship them USPS in a flat rate box, and it's like $10 shipping, so you get, you know, two premium wipers for like 25 bucks. You go to Walmart, you get the, the cheapest ones you can get are like 10 a pop, and they're that shitty style that, you know, disintegrate after like three months. But anywho, I'm going to fire up and run around. And uh, maybe I'll bring you along to check out to see if she's, you know, got any more acceleration. Because she was pretty, pr pretty pitiful the last time we looked. Okay, so I actually just realized why this one looks like ass. And if you look at this one, you notice how it just gets real bright like right there. And if you come over to this one, it's just like glowing I don't know if you can make it out but that's all the silver that's left is up in there this is all oxidized um, either that or water got in it and fogged up while I was working on it but yeah I think I'm gonna need to replace that because I think all the reflective material is just gone in there anywho I'm gonna hop on the road and run around and uh, I got a couple things I want to test today uh, I want to see if the cruise control works which is kind of a dangerous proposition because if it doesn't, then uh, we may get a runaway engine. And uh, we don't know if that, you know, this comes off or something. So I'll have to be prepared to kill it, um, you know, when I activate it. So I'm not going to do that while on the phone. The other thing I want to check is the emergency brake. I want to see if that works now that the shoes are adjusted. So uh, we'll have to try and perform some emergency stops or something. But uh, I'm going to go roll around and uh, tune in and I'll let you know what the updates are. And let me not hit a bench over there. All right, well, the cruise control doesn't work at all. Um, I may be doing it wrong, but I can't get it to do anything. Um, you know, it's only got four directions, but it seems to be doing nothing. Um, wipers work, but I seem to only have medium and fast. I don't have low speed, because I can turn it up one more and nothing happens. I turn it up one more and then it goes really fast. So that's kind of interesting, not a huge deal. Um, E-brake does seem to work. I'm going to use it now. So E-brake does work. That's good to know. Doesn't come back up and I don't have the little spring detainer that, you know, keeps it down for a parking brake. So that's kind of suck. So I guess I'll have to throw some chocks in the back of the car. And, uh, yeah. Um, other than that, everything seems to be fine. Um, but I am going to have to do something about that headlight and that, you know, running light but everything else seems to be fine also the flasher do hickey the multifunction switch it doesn't bounce back out when you turn so that's going to take some learning but yeah she gets down the road and she wipes and i got the this window to come down that far and then i think i popped the fuse again and then that window came down and i bet that one will go back up but i'm gonna have to pull that one up and hopefully the fuse isn't blown we'll see 
puddles. I don't think she likes puddles. I about guarantee I can get stuck on my driveway in this thing, which is impressive considering it's entirely sand. All right, yep, we blew that fuse again, so we're gonna throw one of these old aluminum ones in there and uh, hopefully not get electrocuted in what has now become like a tropical storm now. So fun. All right, well, I'm soaking wet, but we got that guy all the way back up, had to, you know, lift on the thing while hitting this, but it seems like, you know, using the old fuse actually helped. I think those new Chinese ones are complete garbage. Um, yeah. Um, that's kind of the next step, I think, maybe, is to pull these door panels off and get in there, pull those whole the whole window track assembly out, and just scrape all the rust off of it and just grease the fuck out of it because I really want to have some windows in this thing. I I ain't going to get to the HVAC forever probably, but windows, I think I can manage windows without having to buy anything. All right, so I was looking up uh, bulbs to buy, so I pulled this guy out uh, to see if I could, you know, figure out why this knob won't turn and if I can get this stupid thing out one-handed. Come on now. There we go. And uh, broke this. I got it to where it was kind of free, but I had to use a knife just to turn this thing because it was so rusted up, and then it just broke the pivot off. And uh, it still don't work. Um, you have to pull this little guy off in here to get to the, the bulb in there, and the bulb looks fine, so I think just this whole circuit board bullshit up in here that's needlessly complicated in German um, just is shot. So I'm going to look see if I can buy one, another one of these. And if I can't, I'm going to figure out a way to hotwire this so I just have a fucking switch here. Um, something like that. But, uh, yeah, I'm having trouble finding uh, that uh, um, driving bulb. Um, I can find them on Amazon, but I don't know if the one's on Rock Auto or direct replacements. Um, turns out buying headlights for this thing really fucking cheap. It's like $7 for those fucking headlights. They're basically like porch lights. So I'm just going to buy a new set. It's like fucking 14 bucks. Can't beat that. Anyway, I'm gonna throw this back in here and uh, we'll ignore this clacking noise forever. And uh, also this wire broke. I don't know how, but it was very loose when I took it off. So I tried, you know, pressing on this to bend these in and on one side just snapped off. So whatever. Well, same sort of situation. I tried to check the uh, glove box light and uh, as soon as I pulled the housing out, it just kind of obliterated so I'll see about buying another one of those not going to be able to find one but the bulb again seems just fine so but you know when I touch these two together nothing happens so I'm guessing this wire is you know burnout or something I don't know but we'll buy another bulb for both this and this just to be safe because it's probably only going to cost me like another buck or two and, uh, yeah, rather be safe than sorry in that regard, and, you know, these are probably usable somewhere else on the car, unless it's German, and then they're not. Okay, so I'm back in here looking at bulbs, you know, just trying to see if I need to order anything else, and I noticed something curious. So, thankfully, I was able to get this one out, and I was able to figure out what kind of bulb it is, because the other one had nothing on it. These are a size, uh, 67. Um, there's side markers? on this side, and the side marker's burned out over here, so I'm gonna buy one of those too. But there's no side marker over here. It's got the, the casting in the plastic for a side marker, but there's just fucking nothing there. Like, and these are OEM, it's the exact same manufacturer. It's not like that was snapped off, I don't think. Like, yeah, that's got, well, Maybe. I don't know. Like, but it just ain't there. It's the same brand. Whatever this fucker is down here. That's stamped right and this stamp left. But uh, we just don't have a side marker housing, like, at all. Let's see, there's five wires there. And there's six here? Or five? Can't quite tell. Um... But yeah, it's the green and white on this side. We may not have one. Yeah, there's six wires on this and five on this, so let's just only have a side marker on this side, I guess. That's really fucking weird. Germans, I tell you. All right, so today we're gonna make an earnest attempt at doing the motor mounts. 
And to replace them, I've got these Cortico mounts because I don't know why they were cheap, so that's what I got. Um, and uh, I do not have uh, another engine shock. Uh, that's because my bushings appear to be fine. And because, uh, um, yeah, I ain't paying $60 for, you know, a motor shock when these are like $10 a piece. So we're just going to do these, and if we end up needing a shock, we'll do that later down the road. I um, may have to take the shock out to do the uh, driver's side mount, but we're going to start with the uh, passenger side, and I'm going to pull the air cleaner out uh, so that I can, you know, properly access that. And then uh, hopefully it should just be a matter of uh, pulling out the center bolt and the two uh, side bolts, um, lifting the engine up with a floor jack and a piece of wood, just ever so slightly, about an inch or so, and... Uh, Sliding the new one in, um, or sliding the old one out, sliding the new one in, putting the bolts back, and calling it a day. So let's get to it. All right, so it's been about an hour and a half, and I successfully replaced one. And I'm happy to report that I am fairly confident that I simultaneously stripped that Allen out and cross-threaded it at the same time. So that is never going to come back out, which means we don't have to use Loctite. But here is the old passenger side. And here is the new going in on the driver's side. And uh, I don't know how well I can get you to see this, but I don't know if you can see it, but it's about a quarter inch taller, the new one. This one was still in fairly okay shape. You know, just smooshed, but the rubber was still all there. Um, turns out there's shocks on both sides, so we're definitely not doing those because that's going to be like $120. The biggest pain out of this whole thing was getting one of those six millimeters out on the back side of this because you only get about um, an eighth of a turn and you have to use an Allen. And I had to take an Allen and then stick a 5 16 deep well uh, quarter inch socket and then this quarter inch adapter on the end of it just to get enough leverage to break the torque. And uh, that one's going to be real fun to get back in. Because uh, with how deep these fucking walls are on here for some reason, you can't thread any of it in by hand. You have to use this. And it's going to be a real motherfucker starting that, you know, using this, only getting that much turnage each time. And that's the other thing, is it's I get to do this, then move it all the way over here to the other side, have to swap it between hands, and then go, uh, just so I can stick it right back in here and go, uh. And that's the kind of progress I have to make. So that's going to be a motherfucker, but I'm going to go try and get, slide this one out, slide this one in, get the center bolt in, get that bolt in right there, and then we'll fight the last one, and then I can take this thing off of the jack, and hopefully not guillotine myself. Oh, and uh, before I jacked it up, I uh, took the fan shroud off, so that the fan, you know, wouldn't pop that off on its own, and I disconnected this throttle linkage right here. Ooh, that was caught. Um, yeah, hopefully that didn't bend. Just so, you know, that had some room to free ball. Yeah. So, I'm gonna get to it. Alright, well that's all done. So, brand new shiny motor mounts are in both sides. Air cleaner's back in. Fan shroud is back on. Throttle, cut, or throttle linkage is hooked back up. Uh, I think that's everything I took off. I hope so, at least. Um, yeah, I guess a couple of quick pro tips for you. Um, those inside uh, hex um, on either side, you're gonna need to get in there with like a wood screw, probably a two inch wood screw, maybe a two and a half is probably gonna be perfect. Just reach up in there like that and just clean the absolute fuck out of that hex as much as you can because it's not so much having enough, you know, meat in there to be able to break the torque free. Uh, it's well, that's important, but more so it's about being able to sit it deep enough in that you can turn it and not actually hit anything. Also, uh, get a six millimeter Allen key and just like, you know, cut like a, like a three eighths of an inch off of one side over here and like cut this down like halfway and just have that as a sacrificial one you use specifically for this job. Cause once you get all the torque broken free, you're going to want that to be able to spin everything out, you know? honestly get one of these and just cut it off with like that much sticking out um and that's probably or and then you know cut about an inch off of one side and that'll that'll help you a whole fuck ton uh, especially getting those inner ones started um 
Uh, speaking of that, um, take the center bolts out, the big 10 or eight millimeters out, then jack it up. And then that'll actually lift the engine up out of your way slightly so that you can get the, the two inner six millimeters out. I'd break the torque free on the outer ones if you can. Uh, you know, you should have enough room to be able to get down in there and just break the torque free. And then I would recommend taking them out, taking the outer ones out and putting them back in with an Allen, if at all possible. I'm pretty confident I cross-threaded both of mine, both of the outer ones, for whatever reason, they would not go in straight. Um, don't know why. They were the only, like, they were the first ones I put in. There was nothing pushing against them. I had all the room I could, and they just would not go in straight and I just didn't I start turning them and turning them and it gets to a point and they're tight and I go well shit I've cross threaded it and no matter what I do I can't get them out of the cross thread so I just fucking ran them home and the bolts a lot uh, a lot stronger than the um, the nut welded down to uh, the frame down there so it just it's just cut its own threads um, is what it's it is what it is um, those honestly don't look that bad I don't know if they've been done before uh, it looks like those are Mark Mercedes, so those are probably new. This was the side underneath the fuel pump, and it is in remarkable good, remarkably good shape. What I've heard is that the diesel leaks down and melts these, and uh, seems to have melted the top here, but they're honestly in pretty good shape. This is the uh, passenger side, and you know, because of the way the engine rotates, this one has just had the shit beat out of it, or maybe that shock is bad, but honestly, they're not too bad, which to me says that you know, once I fire this thing back up, it's still going to shake like a motherfucker, but I've done what I can. I'm just going to live with it. I'm not doing those shocks because they're probably just as hard as those mounts. And I'm not doing that again. Uh, another pro tip, pick a nice, beautiful, like, 75 degree overcast afternoon out to do this. You know, when it is not as least, as little humid as possible, not hot, no direct sunlight. Just where you have calm and patience. It took me two hours. It felt like five. Uh, and that was, you know, without, you know, the elements fucking me over. But, anywho, let's fire her up, see if she still shakes. Or if the fan immediately grenades the shroud. One of the two. I'm not even gonna fucking wait on the glow plugs. It shakes considerably less. Like, a lot less than I thought. Uh, you know, it still shakes, as you can see by this guy jiggling. It shakes really quickly. But that seemed to have helped. Not horribly, you know, not a horrible amount more, but, you know, better than nothing. So I'm gonna go run around the block, make sure you know my engine is sitting correctly, and uh, all that other fun stuff. But uh, that's motor mounts done. One more thing off the list. Well, the radio kind of sort of works. Uh, I don't think the antenna works too well, so signal goes in and out. And uh, kind of miraculously, the glove box light works now. I guess the key had to be on, but. Uh, it comes and goes as the glove box flaps around. Um, I can get the turbo to unsteadily sit at about nine PSI when we're hitting about four grand. She just, she won't go over 60. She does not like it. She downshifts into third if I get too hard in it. She won't build up speed. And then as soon as I let off, she shifts back into fourth. And then, you know, if I try and give her any amount of beans or onions, she just goes back into third and I just, you know, I'm, I physically can't, like, I can't get the gear ratios to line up. Can you shut up? Okay. So, I think we have the bare minimum of what we need to make this car roadworthy. She stops, she d goes. Um, she is, uh, she's definitely a, um, not a highway rig. I cannot get her to, you know, stay over 60. Um, if I try and feed her any amount of onions to, you know, get it to accelerate, uh, she downshifts into third, and then she sits at about four grand at 60 with about nine PSI of boost. Uh, and then as soon as I let off the throttle, she shifts back up into fourth and then just kind of hovers right at 60. And so I think she's going to be real gradual getting above 60, but I get a lot of body shake above 60. So 
kind of don't want to go that fast. Uh, thankfully, my commute is only 55 miles an hour at most the whole way, which is, you know, real realistically 60. But I think I can get her to do 55 and I can get one of those, you know, speed limit 55 stickers for the back of my window. And uh, hopefully uh, get this window to roll down so I can tell people to fucking go around me because there's no way I'm speeding up. And uh, yeah, car's a car now. For the most part, kind of, mostly. Now all I just need is uh, title tags and insurance, and I'm working on title right now. Got everything. Well, I got to get paid county taxes so that I can send in the title to get title in my name, and then once I got that, then I'll shop around for insurance and then figure out whether or not it's going to be worth it for me to even insure this damn thing, or if I should, because I have to have insurance to register it, and if it's going to be like $1,700 to insure the thing every year, then kind of don't want to do that but i might be able to get on my parents plan and you know get it for like a thousand bucks or something then just leave it here i don't know we'll see um oh one thing she actually sounds pretty good at uh oh come on now at uh if i keep her in reverse or first you know she actually sounds like she's got some guts to her because you know i can get back over here and then just pick her up, spin the wheels a bit, you know, send her around the corner at three grand. But if I don't do that, then she automatic, she just stays in second, unless I come to a complete dead stop and put it in park, and then she's just gutless. But uh, yeah, probably shouldn't just leave her in first and, you know, just hammer on her all the time, but that's where the fun is. Man, look at that hood gap. Choice. So, got new wipers, and what better time to install wipers than when it is currently raining? Well, before it rains would be, you know, a better option, but I'm not the fucking weatherman. Fuck you, I'm doing it right now. All right, there they are, installed. So, for wipers, we went with Anko 20 inches, and I got the highest quality beam they sell. I've actually got those in 19s over there on the Jeep, and so far I've been really pleased with the price to performance. I have, you know, I've been on a hunt for the perfect wiper, um, and, you know, beam is where it's at, um, and so far I have tried Vallejo, Trico, Denso, um, Anko, everything that ends in an O, but anywho, so far I've been really impressed with the Ankos. They've been holding up really well. Uh, they've got a really nice swipe pattern on the Jeep at least. So we're gonna try them out on here uh, because uh, they were actually really cheap. They were like seven bucks a pop. So can't hurt. I mean, the Bosch stuff is like $16 a pop and that's from Rock Auto. Germans. All right, well, also before I test these, I wanna see if I can shim this a little bit cause it's kind of spraying like right here. It's still usable. Um, but I would really kind of prefer if it landed here rather than here, you know, maybe not quite here. That's a little low, a little bit wonky. So I'm going to see if I can make a shim for it. And if the shim doesn't work, I'll give up. Um, it's usable right now, but let's, uh, let's hit them wipers and, uh, see what kind of wipe we get. All right. Keys on. Let's see if we're a one wipe wonder. Ooh, that's party. All right, let's see about how this spray works. Eh, it's still pretty strong. That one's worse now that I've adjusted the hood. Eh, I don't think that shim's doing anything. But then wipers are definitely doing something. So, progress. I'll just ignore the washers. You gotta do it. You can do it, little manis. I believe in you. Don't let your dreams be dreams. <laughs> All right, so we got a whole pile of light bulbs. So I'm gonna do both headlights. These are dome lights, I believe. Then I've got a side marker in one of these, and I've got rear driving lights in one of these, and I got fog lights here. So we're just gonna do the works because it was like 50 bucks for all these lights. So might as well just set our baseline right, and then we'll keep everything I pull out that's still good, like you know, the fog light and these guys. We'll keep all of them just for spares. But uh 
we'll just go ahead and you know get off on the right foot Alrighty, so the running light and the side marker back here on the uh, driver's rear they've been done all right that one's been done too but as you can see not making a damn difference so yeah this is toast i couldn't find another one so we'll have to get one from a scrapyard or rig up a light switch all right so headlights and fog lights are going in without any fight um that was this light as you can see i was indeed correct there is basically no reflective material left it is just straight glass frosted glass uh and uh I brought it over here to show y'all, and uh, when I set it down, the front fell off. And uh, this is a Sylvania, so do with that what you will. And uh, these fog lights are kind of interesting, but pretty straightforward. You just have this little spring clip in here. You just take the new bulb, set it in with the wire poking out that way, fold the spring clips down, latch them in place, plug this single lead up here into this guy. Uh, fold your, you know, light condom back down and loop it over this, jam it back in here, line up the uh, screw holes, and then tighten them down. So uh, now that I'm not being rained on, um, you know, incessantly, it's a lot easier to think and figure out how to get this apart. So all I know is that I really fucked up the headlight alignment on this one over here. Uh, so we'll have to fix that, but all you really have to do is take this front cover off, and then you loosen all of these screws, and then that allows you to pull the light out. You don't actually have to pull them all the way out. All right, well, we have fog lights and we have headlights. Let's check brights real quick. All right, well, we have brights because the fog lights went out. Can't really tell. I probably shouldn't be doing this in the middle of the day. Now, we still have a problem over here. This running light is not working, so whenever the hell that cools down to not 7,000 degrees, I'm going to pull that one out and stick it over here. Uh, I, I bought the wrong bulb. I'm well aware of that, but I was hoping they were the same amperage and the same footprint and all that stuff, that they'd still work. But it looks like they're not, so I'm going to have to buy some actual whatever these are. I don't know why they didn't just make all these fucking bulbs the same size. But side marker works. Um, hold up, i got to turn the lights on for the you see that but side markers working you see that one works but when I put this guy down in here I get nothing but anyway I'm gonna double check that it's you know not the socket itself that's messing it up and that bulb gets real hot might as well just run this thing so I don't kill the battery while I'm testing There she goes. Ah, Woo wee! Smoky. Ooh, she hot. A little bit of water. Get some of that cooling action on there. Let's see if it works on this side. She's smoking today. I don't know what that's about. Must just sat for a while. Oh yeah, that socket's actually burned out. Well, that's annoying. We'll have to play with that. Yep. Good thing I didn't buy more bulbs then. All right, it could just be this plug. Man, you are just a choochin today. Ah, like a chimney. Anyway. I'm going to fell around with this, clean some stuff, clean some wires, something. Could just be crody. Don't know, but not the bulb at least. I think. Oh, I know why she's so smoky today. It's because it's been like, you know, 70, 75 degrees out all day. It's crazy. It's like September. That's not right. Anyway, global warming's real, or I guess climate change, because uh, it's temperate here in Charleston, which is a bad sign. That means uh, we're probably going, you know, for another ice age here while the rest of the world catches fire or something. Anyway, shit's fucked, but um, that's why she's smoking, which also means that she started quasi-cold. She started at 75 degrees um, with uh, essentially only one cycle on the glow plug, so that's reassuring. Uh, but anywho, I'm going to go run around, see if the smoke clears up, and uh, yeah, 
um, just top off the battery and whatnot. All right, so just out here adjusting the headlights, and it's actually really easy on this thing. It's way easier than the fucking Jeep. So fog, fog lights don't really do anything, but as you can see, they're mostly level. This one over here is a little bit lower, and that's because if I turn the brights on, for whatever reason, the bright on this side is higher than the low beam. It's weird, but I've got it set up pretty good. Car is basically level with the slab. So the way I always set them up is I come out here, I get about 20 foot from the car, and I crouch down, and if it's not, you know, hella bright into my eye while crouched, um, well, at, at about this height, this is about, you know, as bright as I want it to be at this distance in the Jeep. But because this car is like half the height, you know, if I get down like just a little bit lower, just about six inches lower, it's about right where I want it. So we're going to go take her out on the road, make sure she's still, you know, Gucci. And just check on back over here. So, yeah, as you can see, the running light's not working. But we do have the side marker. I really do not understand why there's not a side marker over here. I don't know. Germans. So we're going to go take her for a rip and see if the lights work. Just perfect. All right, so I stopped in the road real quick and I just adjusted it about, you know, two, three turns up on both sides. Uh, just because it seemed like I was pointing pretty low and now I'm pretty good and you know when I pop it over here into brights That's about right where I want it. I may go up another turn But I don't want to start blinding people with my busted ass suspension So I think that's you know pretty good You know, I don't really expect too much more out of it. I mean visibility is actually pretty good So it's it's only like you know seven or something at night, you know, we're just getting down to you know proper you know last light well there are the brights i mean i can't really ask any better from a car like this um i can you know see about a half mile down the road flipping over to just you know the regular headlights i mean that's fine you know i'm used to you know being in a jeep or a truck all the time so i'm used to having a little bit more elevation and being getting a little longer beam but I think that's you know acceptable I, I don't want to have obnoxious brights because I'm not a cunt uh, so I think we're gonna stick with this I might maybe might turn it out in one more turn but I think we're pretty good this is probably about as good as it's gonna get look a little possum by a little possum turbo noise all right, so you may notice that the camera looks different, and that's not because I bought a new camera. It's because I broke my phone when I was pulling this piece of shit out of this piece of shit. So the trials and tribulations have begun. Uh, the part that uh, was supposed to uh, be able to come off by hand, uh, by hand required vice grips, and the front panel fell off, and all those guys fell off, and I broke the um, the alignment pin out of the center of this massive fucking thing, but thank god it has a dead pin on there, so that at the very least, you know, I can probably backfill that dead pin with epoxy and not accidentally hook that up wrong and set this thing on fucking fire. So I can finally get in here and uh, see if I can fix the odometer, because hopefully it's just that the, uh, the plastic gear on the uh, central axle has just worn the shaft smooth and it no longer is sticking to the axle, and I can just take that off there, knurl it a little bit, stick it back on, have the odometer working so that I can actually, you know, know what the fucking mileage is on this thing, and hopefully I didn't just fucking break the entire goddamn car, but I did just break my fucking phone. Oh, Christ. All right, so I got my phone fixed, and I have gone in here and done what I can. Honestly, could not do a lot. There's still a few other things I need to do involving the soldering iron, but I'll get to those at a later date. Um, I think I may have fixed the clicking noise with the speedometer by breaking the odometer. Um, I tried to fix it. I did my darndest. It's better than it was, but the whole odometer system is just rusted solid. The, the shafts inside 
like all of the interlinking gears have rusted and seized onto the gears and the gears are no longer free spinning and the clicking was actually the worm gear for the odometer um, the, the primary drive brass gear for the odometer and the worm gear that ran it the brass gear had seized and the worm gear was just clicking underneath it and I've gotten the brass gear to the point where it could theoretically move but all the other gears it's hooked up to are not moving so I've got it now to the point where it just kind of does like this and the worm gear also kind of clicks out of the way but it it's softer now it doesn't clack anymore as far as I can tell uh, and the, the odometer numbers will halfway roll all of them not just one they'll halfway roll and then stop so maybe at some point well it'll start just fucking going wild I don't know um I'm gonna try and repair the clock apparently there's two capacitors in there that go bad so I want to take yonder soldering iron and some eBay capacitors when they show up replace them see if the clock works if it doesn't who the fuck cares it's just the clock I wear a watch um I think this potentiometer right here is probably blown out um, don't know why only one of these lights is working uh, I do know that there's a contact back behind here on this board down in here it's right behind this screw that the solder has like three-quarters of the way broken off of so I'm gonna resolder that back on uh, I took this plug this thing in here broke off uh, the alignment pin and it fell on the ground I don't know where it went so what I did was take two toothpicks and jam them into this empty hole on the plug so that I can't, you know, plug it in the wrong way. It'll only go in one way. It'll be a lot fucking harder to put it on, but at least I won't put it on wrong. And, uh, what else did I fuck with? I think that was it. I took all of these out, didn't clean anything. Um, oh, and I did, I glued all of this back on. I just took some five minute epoxy and just put it the whole way around, so. This is now on there. It's not perfectly sealed. I don't care. It's a hot fucking mess. Alright, I have news to report. We don't have capacitors to fix the clock yet, but we have tidal. So it's just a matter of time now because I'm not going to give up this late late in the game. This is now officially my problem. Okay, so I got my Chinese capacitors in. They look a little bit smaller than they need to be, but eh, who the fuck cares? We'll make it work. What are we going to do? Break the clock? It already doesn't work. So this is like in the matter of a week, I've had to do like two specialty solder jobs after having never had to do that my entire life. So it's weird how, you know, the world works like that because I'd said you know I kind of want to do some more electrical repairs here and then like the next week you know the mower at work blew a motherboard and then I pulled this out and was like oh hey I can change capacitors to fix the clock strange but anywho I'm gonna pull all this out because the stuff I need to work on is in here so I've got to take the clock off well, actually the stuff I need to work on is in here so in order to work on the clock I got to pull this off but I also want to fix this little tab in here so I have to pull all this off and it's just Phillips head screws so to get everything out so okay here's everything out of the housing and over here on the cluster this is the tab I was talking about it appears that this has just barely held on and is somehow still making contact and I have a sneaking suspicion that that's the ground for these two lights which would explain why the blinker is barely working and why this light never turns on for the overhead bulb so I'm gonna solder these two tabs back on and hope that you know the solder takes and that's all I gotta fix over here cuz I ain't touching any of that shit and then over here in the clock these are the two capacitors I'm talking about as you can see they are 100 microfarad 16 volt so instead I have gotten some cheap Chinese ones that are 100 microfarad 25 volt. The extra voltage doesn't make a damn difference. It just, it, you know, it gets what it gets. It's not going to put anything else out. It takes the voltage it's given and it increases the amperage. So if you have extra voltage, it doesn't really matter. So these 25 volts will be just fine, except for the fact that they're really fucking tiny. So hopefully I can flare them out far enough to get them to solder in there correctly. And then they'll just kind of be up here on posts. And all this stuff seems to be bare metal. Um, I have some neutral cure silicone right here, just some GE 284. So I may seal those up. Um, we shall see. But I've got to figure out how the hell to get to them to solder them. 
because I think I have to take, I think I have to undo these three screws to take the this backer off and then undo those three screws up there to then pull the clock out. Um, yeah, and also the clock is fine mechanically. If I press this down, you know, it adjusts just fine. So it's an electrical issue, not a mechanical issue. So what I read online is that these go bad and that's generally the cause of the problems. And this cost me like eight bucks. So fucking might, might as well worth the try. And yeah, that's all I gotta do is just solder that and somehow get this off and then solder these two. And uh, then we should be good. Okay, so while I have the odometer out, I might as well show you what I was talking about before with this thing being all fucked. So what what I can do to test this is I take a, an S1 uh, square head bit, or I guess Robertson if you're Canadian, stick it in there, hook that up to a drill, spin that, and then this whole, that sort of round mechanism in there is the speedometer. We won't worry about that. All this other gears and other bullshit is the odometer. It's all mechanical. So what happens is that not quite worm gear kind of well semi worm semi helical gear right there vertical in the center spins that spins that worm gear at the top which then spins that spur gear on the end of this worm gear that then spins this spur gear oh I have to spin that uh, counterclockwise by the way and then this brass gear is what drives all of this in there and then this is your trip right here which you flick this guy to I guess disengage and then it's either supposed to undo by spring tension or when you run it I don't know how these mechanical jobs work but anywho I think something up in here one of these gears is seized and it's just fucking everything because if I spin this with the drill I can get all of this to just kind of jitter a little bit but nothing will move and I mangled up this spur gear trying to get it to rotate and now this side will rotate but something up in here is still jammed and I have just if you see everything's all greasy now I just soaked everything in penetrating oil and maybe one day it'll let up but it ain't gonna be today and I am just don't have the time to fool with this because the last thing I want to do is break my speedometer but I think I got rid of the clicking so let me see if I can take this power drill spin that and show you what the odometer is doing. May not be able to do that one-handed. All right, so there we go. My drill will only do 40 miles an hour, apparently. Yeah, you see what it's doing? It's just jumping out. That, that worm gear has been bent. But that spur gear does move back and forth just a tiny bit. Yep, see them all? They just move ever so slightly and then go back. Yep. So that's what I'm dealing with. So I guess we just won't have an odometer. I'm just going to have to keep good GPS track of my mileage so I know when to do an oil change. Or just do one every year. Uh, we don't fucking know. Or I may just buy a new unit. Because there's... I have full confidence that if I try and take this apart, I am going to fuck something up. And I really don't want to do that. Um, so I may just have to bite the bullet by a new speedo unit at some point. Anywho, I'm gonna get the soldering. Okay, so I'm just warming up the soldering iron to fix that guy, but now that I'm actually in here looking at this, I don't think I'm actually gonna be able to replace those capacitors, because I gotta take this back plate off, and in order to do that, I have to take all of those off, all these little screws, I have to take those three, and then those three, off and then I have to somehow disconnect that plug or pull it through like the only thing I don't have to take off is this mechanism right here but I somehow have to get to the back of that circuit board so it means I have to get this plate off and of course these posts for the front plate are riveted on and I have to take those heads off to get the plate off to be able to pull that out to get to the back of it and I don't trust that uh, not to immediately destroy itself and if, I f if the clock stays broken, I don't give a shit, but I do not want to fuck up that tack. Um, and it looks like I have to undo whatever the hell that solder job is right there as well, and I think that might also be riveted. And 
Yeah, I really should have looked at this before I bought these capacitors, but I, I, I don't think we're getting in there. Um, that's it's a little more complicated than I was expecting. Uh, the, the chance for me to fuck something up and have to buy a $200 tachometer is way too great. So I think we're just going to leave the clock unfixed, but I am going to resolder that. And then we'll throw this back in the Merc, and hopefully everything still works. Or unworks, or works gooderist, or... All right, well, after I forgot to turn the soldering iron like on like four times, uh, we have just soldered the fuck out of this tab, so hopefully that doesn't come off again, and hopefully that still clearances. I think it should. Um, or it might not. I don't think, yeah, I don't think anything touches it, so it should be fine. Um, hopefully the flux did its job and flux some stuff, or we'll have poor connections. I think I'm going to hit this with the um, uh, multimeter and check for impedance and just try and figure out what this is actually grounding. I'm... I'm really thinking it's these guys up here, just based on where that thing seems to be running, maybe, somewhere. It's doing something, but anywho, we're going to um, we're gonna check to see where the continuity actually is. Alright, that's all back together, so let's see if we can get that in there without breaking that, or this again. So, uh, suffice to say, I'm not going to film this, and uh, I'm going to stick my phone uh, up there on the dashboard where it's not going to get smashed. Also, just this is what I did. Uh, there was a dead plug, dead hole right here, and because I lost my centering pin, I just jammed a bunch of fucking toothpicks in it. And uh, so yeah, so now that'll all up. those toothpicks will line up with that hole there, and so the only way it'll plug in is if uh, you know I have it lined up right, or that that dead or that dead one was supposed to be on a pin for some fucking reason, uh, because Germans and uh, whole car will catch fire. One of the two, we'll figure it out. All right, well, I got that in. So I think what I'm gonna go do is hook up the battery and uh, verify that I put I put those in the right place because I didn't mark them. Um, I put the one bulb in the glow plug and the three bulb in the um, seat belt because that makes sense to me so long as Germans use, you know, regular numbers. Because, you know, there's four bulb holes right there and two are unused, so I figure one, two, three, four, and not, you know, like, one, two, three, four, but you know, whatever. I'm, I'm just a normal human. I'm not German. Uh, I don't have their autism. So anywho, I just have regular autism. So I'm gonna hook up the battery real quick and uh, make sure everything is working. And uh, then I think we will fire it up just so I can verify that the uh, oil pressure sensor is not suddenly blowing oil everywhere because I don't wanna have to pull this thing back out. And uh, you know, once I've got you know, a, a quasi-decent idea that this thing is going to work, then we'll push it all back in there and snug it up. The battery's hooked up, and the car doesn't smell on fire yet, so... Ah, oh, good. I think I hooked everything up right. Maybe. Can't really tell. Well, fuel gauge is working. The clock ain't moving, so... We know we somehow didn't create a miracle. Work with my hands since I can't get down in there. Better warm up just a little bit. The tack still works. Oil pressure gauge still works. That's a good sign. Don't see any fire yet. I smell a little bit of fire. That's probably not a good sign, but that's probably just the diesel. Well, that's still dim. And that's not, so I don't think we fixed that ground issue. We got choochage? Yeah, we got some choochage, so. Let's see, can I make this? Oh, that's the clock. I can't even see if these lights are working. Neither can you. Anyway, I'll just have to get wait till it's dark to realize that, you know, these don't work in here anymore. I was only able to get the these lights to work under very special circumstances, and apparently they're in, you know, irreplaceable special incandescent bulb. So, rather not break them if I don't have to. Uh, let's see, what's his face? Uh, Kent with Mercedes Source is working on LEDs for those. So they can always be replaced, but, you know, rather not if I don't have to. Also, it's not just the Mercedes anymore that gets water in her floor pan. 
Theseus is too, and I have no fucking idea how it's getting in, again. And it's not the AC, I already fixed that, and I got a tube for it. And it's not the weather stripping as far as I can tell, because I can open this in the downpour, and it'll be dry the whole way around. And it's not coming through the blower motor intake as far as I can tell. So I don't really know what the fuck is going on, but somehow I'm getting tons of water whenever it rains right down here on my passenger floorboard. And if I get too much in here, it runs over into my... If, if I get too much in and I'm parked at an uphill, it gets down into my, um, uh, my rear passenger and I have no way to get it out over there. But thankfully, Jeep put in these little fucking holes down here in the floor pan. And if you just pull the foam out, you can, uh, you know, just, you know, give it a good old wet macaroni treatment. And uh, over the course of a month, if it doesn't rain, you can get all the water out. Then it rains again. Now my car smells like a dead body. It's great. All of my cars smell like dead bodies, except the truck. The truck's not mine, though. Fuck. All right, so since I had the uh, kickboard out, I just went up there and just wrapped up that Mies chewed wire. It doesn't seem to be affecting anything, so I'm not going to bother trying to reach my arms up there and splice that. So we'll just wrap it up, and if I, if I ever have any weird electrical gremlins going on up here to something, I, uh, I know where to try. With my luck, that's probably cruise control. That's probably why the cruise control doesn't work, but we'll just ignore it and never touch it again. And uh, I don't know why it ever possessed me to route this, this hose for the, uh, the boost gauge through that hole right there and not just like right here along the edge of the firewall, all nice and, you know, hidden-like. Because uh, now I can't take this kick panel out. And, uh, yeah, that was stupid. Why the fuck did I do that? And, you know, I, can, I can't replace this thing now, which I could really easily do. So, anywho, someday I'm gonna fix that, and it ain't today. All right, so she's driving along just fine. The seat belt is light blinky guy is being an asshole, and it's fucking up. Um, so the tachometer is being very low resolution and the fuel gauge could qu uh, keeps cutting in and out. But as you can see, I have eliminated the ticking noise by messing with the odometer. And the you know needle is way more stable. It's still a little bit shaky, but you know, considering how terrible the suspension is, you can just pretend that it's the suspension. But you know, it it doesn't move more than about one or maybe even maybe two at worst miles per hour when it sits there and shakes so it's it's more than good enough i gotta look into this seat belt thing because my seat belt is it's on um and it's been on like it when i put first put the thing in drive it wasn't but uh ever since then it's been on even stopped put the car in park and everything and hasn't gone away so i gotta look out look figure that out it's probably a ground or something i gotta fix but uh Everything else seems to be fine. The engine seems a little loud. Could just be that I had finally developed a hole in my exhaust. Well, that's interesting. Uh, I put the car in park and uh, gave it a rev dump just to see if the tack would work. And a uh, seatbelt light came on and uh, now the tack is uh, stuck. You see, that's what I was doing before. You know, now we're in park and it's being fucky. Let's hope that goes away when I shut the car off. It doesn't. That's not a good sign. Well, we may have lost the tack. Piss. Okay, so thankfully my epoxy job up here on the uh, top of the housing was terrible. So when I was trying to pull this instrument panel back out, it's fucking stuck again. I had to pry on it originally to get it out and I had to pry it on again. I still couldn't get it out and I didn't want to break it all, but I did crack the epoxy up here a little bit because I'm using like 30 year old five minute epoxy that's you know down to like that much left in the tube but uh thankfully i was able to slide a zip tie in there and get it on there and just tap it and uh, it went right back down so i think it was just mechanically stuck and uh, i'm gonna give it a little bit of a rev dump and just see if it sticks there again yeah it's sticking now huh but yeah that seems to be mechanical interesting patented zip tie poking, poking See, now it's fine. So maybe we'll just have to leave the zip tie in there for now. See, now it's sticking below. So there's gotta be a sticky spot in that shaft now. That's interesting. There we are. We'll just have to, I'm just gonna leave the zip tie in here. 
There we are, that's part of the car now. Wonderful. Hey you, I may or may not have forgotten to film an outro or two or three. So this is the outro. So if you like what I'm doing here, go down there, like the video, comment, tell me what else you want me to see due, due to this pile of shit. I can't promise that I'm going to have any motivation to do any of it, but I'll at least maybe read it, potentially. And uh, if you want to see the rest of the series and uh, see me eventually drive this stupid thing to a place and then back home to use this automobile as a means of personal conveyance, what a radical idea. Go down there and smash that subscribe button. And until next time, Tom out.